Okay, hello everybody. Uh, today we are gonna make Hawaiian style beef stew. So I don't know about you guys, but when I first started work decades ago, three decades ago, um, at a restaurant in Hawaii, the first thing they told me is you know how to make beef stew. And I think that's the standard in our days anyway of uh, if you can cook or not. So anyway, uh, what we're doing is we're just browning off some chuck roll right now in a rondo. And uh, we'll get you some steps and I'll get right back to you guys, all right? See you in a bit. Okay, so now that I got the meat pretty much browned up, um, listen, you guys don't have to do this. You don't, it's not necessary to brown your meat. We just do it for that a little bit more flavor. Um, but, we, you know, like I said, you don't have to do it. You can just go straight to braising your meat in some liquid. So what I'm gonna do is add some onions now and um, add some liquid, a water, stock, whichever one you want. And uh, we'll start braising the meat. Be right back. So now that I got the onions in there, I'm gonna add some water just to cover the meat. And let me add a little bit more. Okay, so I got uh, the meat covered now with the onions. I'm gonna chuck a few bay leaves in there. And we're gonna let this simmer down till the meat comes uh, semi-tender. You don't wanna cook it all the way through because you still gotta add all your other stuff in. In the meantime, so you can start chopping, cleaning and chopping your carrots and your celery. Uh, this, because of restaurant use, we don't put any we do not put any potatoes in there, but you're welcome to. Remember, potatoes go in at the very end. Uh, we don't put potatoes because it start melting down and, and, and having the, uh, the gravy part of the beef stew become not mushy but grainy, and we don't want that. So we omit potatoes. Um, but the carrots and the celery and the onions, of course, we add. So let's uh, cook this down a little bit, and I'll get back to you when we're almost there, okay? And one more, uh, one more thing that I gotta add. Uh, don't add any salt or pepper yet. Okay, you gonna, you gonna season at the end or close to the end. Um, if you, if you put it in now, all it'll do is when you redo stuff down, it'll just get way too salty. And once it's way too salty, it's, you're done. So, just no salt and pepper yet. All we got in there is the beef, uh, some bay leaf, and some onion and some water, and um, we'll go from there. Okay, see you guys in a bit. Okay, so with the meat around halfway done, uh, the meat is still tough right now, but I put some celery in there, and uh, that's the second to the last vegetable, and the only thing we're gonna add after that is carrots. So all we're doing is, this is about after about 35 minutes, 40 minutes of simmering. We still got about another 40 minutes before the meat starts to turn soft. So at about the half an hour mark, we'll start adding the rest of the ingredients in and cooking it down to just so the meat gets soft. Um, so let me get this thing going again and uh, we'll get back to you guys in a bit, all right? Okay, everyone, so now it's about three quarter way, well, a little less than three quarter way of the meat getting soft. So what I'm adding right now is concentrated beef stock. Um, you can buy this at all the stores or your regular supermarkets. It's just, um, it's not bouillon cubed, but it's concentrated beef stock. It just gets it a little bit more rich. Um, you guys could just use pure beef stock if you have it, but this gives it a little bit more flavor. Because you're still going to roux it and um, get some uh, tomato paste in there too. So just mix in your concentrated beef stock. You just want it to taste like a rich beef soup right now so adjust it and just watch out it's salty okay so don't add too much of it in there uh, go a little bit at a time until you get the desired taste um, which is like a rich beef stock you're making beef stew all right so let me get that worked in and I'll get back to you guys when we start to add the rest of the ingredients see you guys in a bit okay so everyone so we're about uh, maybe about 10 minutes away from adding the carrots into the beef stew stock. Remember now, before you add your carrots, make sure you soak your carrots in real hot water, not boiling water, but really hot tap water. 
it'll just make the carrots hotter or warmer as it goes into the stock so it won't stop the boiling process too much and uh, you won't have an outside cooked mushy carrot and the inside still raw so soak it in some hot water and um, uh, before you add it took about 10 minutes in hot water change it maybe once and then uh, then get ready to add into your stock so I'll get back to you when we're ready to add the carrots okay everyone we're back so I dumped out the water out of the carrots and um, they're nice and hot now and we're about three quarter way of cooking the meat is just turning soft now it's not soft yet but it's turning soft now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the carrots in and we'll bring it back up to a boil and turn it down to simmer again so we'll give that about a good 10-15 minutes now this all depends on what amount you're making of course we're making it with a big rondo here but with what you guys are making it, you know you guys do be the judge um, you want to start adding the rest of the ingredients before your carrots get absolutely soft so let me um, we stir in the carrots let me get the ingre other ingredients ready and I'll get back in a little bit I'm trying to keep this video as short as possible all right I'll see you folks in a bit okay so now what we're gonna do is um, the meat is just about getting soft now so what we'll do is we'll add some of our tomato paste in there Again, as for how much, I'll figure out the, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll write down the recipe for you guys on our website. But what you wanted to do is just, I, so with a rondo this big, um, I add about a third of a can, a number 10 can of tomato paste. So just bear with me and um, get this thing going for you folks I found some place to mount the camera so I don't have to hold it every time I'm cooking and when you add the tomato paste you gotta keep stirring it because it's just gonna settle to the bottom and burn so what you want to do is you want to keep moving it around. Okay, so you're right. It's getting there now. <clears throat> what you gotta do at this point, after you add all your tomato pieces, is, is get a bit of taste. It should be tasting like your beef stew already. At this point, you're gonna have to start salt and peppering it. I think I still gotta add a little bit more tomato paste in there. And every once in a while, scrape the bottom to see if you got any tomato paste left on the bottom.
Okay, so let me get the rest of this tomato paste in and um, so I can keep this video as short as possible. And uh, once I start salt and peppering it, I'll give you guys. And I don't know if I put it in the video or not, I have to go back and look, but if I didn't, uh, while I was cooking the meat, at the beginning part of cooking the meat, I, I did actually add about a cup of red wine, uh, Cabernet wine. Any red wine will do, but uh, I did add about a cup of red wine when I was cooking it, just when I before I put the bay leaves in, okay? I'll be back in a little bit, see you guys in, in a bit. Okay, so getting back, I, I added a, just a little bit more salt and a little bit more pepper. Remember that beef, that beef, concentrated beef paste you put in is really salty, so, um, you know, salt and pepper at the end. Like I said, give it a taste. It should be tasting like beef stew already to you. The last, the last component now is we're gonna add the roux, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, I'm just gonna let it boil down a little bit more. Make sure the carrots are all soft, which they pretty much are. Meat is pretty soft already. You don't want your meat to fall apart. I mean, it's good, but you want to have something hearty to bite into. You know what I mean? So, try not to overcook your stews. But you see, we got a nice red color now. And when we add the roux, it's gonna lighten up to make it more of an orange, like, you know, beef stew supposed to look like. The taste is good right now. What I'm gonna do is start making the roux. So we'll let it come up to a boil here, and I'll show you guys the roux. Okay, guys, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a kitchen roux. Uh, it's not a roux that you cook down, like how you usually see people make roux in a salt, but it is a kitchen roux. So what we do is we got some AP flour, just all-purpose flour, and we're just adding some canola oil in there. And what we do is we'll smooth this out. Make sure you mix it real well so it's uh, really combined. And this is the kitchen roux. So, you know, rule of thumb is uh, rules for stews and, and, and soups and whatnot and cornstarch for for gravies and and um, gravies and sauces, yeah? Um, you don't really wanna use a cornstarch mixture in this because it, it doesn't get as, as hearty as you want it to be. So this is just basically flour and oil together and I'll have the, um, the actual measurements for you back later on on my website. But um, just mix it to it's creamy like this and we're gonna add it to the, to the um, to the stew. I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, so now what we want to do now is what we want to do now is turn off the fire totally. You cannot add you cannot add a roux, a flour roux when it's boiling because all you do is make dumplings. And at the same point when you're using cornstarch and, and a cornstarch slurry, you need it at a rapid boil for it to work. So right now we turn up the fire, we'll, we'll stir it a little bit just to get it to cool down a little bit so it stops boiling. Like I say, you really don't, don't want it to boil because it, it'll just make dumplings when you add the roux in it, okay? So at home you can take it off the fire, it's just too, too much to take off the fire here, so I stir it a little bit to get it um, cool down. Once the boiling is over, just get your whisk and start whisking in your roux. Now it'll thicken uh, slowly, but it won't thicken until you actually boil it again to thicken to its maximum thickness. So just keep mixing your roux in, get it all stirred around, get the outsides of it. And you're gonna kind of see what your desired thickness is before you actually put, bring it back to a boil. As you can see, it's thickening up already. Make sure you're whisking over your roux or under your roux because it, if not, if you just drop it in there, it'll start clumping up like, like I say, like dough balls, you know? Good for chicken and dumplings, not good for stew. Okay? 
So that's about it right there. Just a little bit more. Okay. And just stir your roux around. Now you gotta bring this back up to a boil because you have to cook the flour now. If you won't, you'll have that chalky, that chalky taste to it which you don't want. So we'll get the fire back on. Hang on, I think I gotta light that fire, hang on. Okay, fire's back on, so what we'll do is we'll get this thing back up to a boil. And now, now you have to really watch it. Now you have to really stir it because now that it's thickened up, it can burn pretty fast. So make sure you keep stirring it while it's boiling, but you have to bring it up to a boil. Okay, if not, like I say, you have this chalky taste because the flour is not being cooked out. Right now you have to cook your flour out of the, you can't have raw flour in there. And no, um, making a traditional roux by cooking the flour in there is not feasible for this because it's, it just doesn't work. I mean, we tried it before, it never did really work. So making a kitchen roux is the best way to go about doing it. As long as you bring it up to a boil for about five minutes, you're good. You'll cook all that, that, that flour. You'll make sure the flour is cooked and it's all not chalky anymore. So guys, this is pretty much it. This is your beef stew. Hawaiian style beef stew. I think you guys can see it. I know the, the, the smoke is, um, the steam from it is getting hard time to see. I'll show it to you when we plate it up, but. But this is pretty much it. And uh, I'll get a bowl out and then show you guys what the finished product looks like. See you guys in a bit. So okay guys, this is your finished product. Um, Hawaiian style beef stew. Um, of course over rice would be the best, some macaroni salad. But anyway, so you got the, your sauce. You see it's nice and thick now. Your meat is nice and soft. Pork tender. And um, carrots are soft. So try it. I'll have the recipe for you guys on my website. Um, it takes a little time to do, but it's, you know, of course everybody knows beef stew in Hawaii. It's well worth it. And I hope you folks enjoyed this video. I try to keep it as short as possible. And um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. But it's not that hard to make Hawaiian style beef stew. Especially you cooks out there want to get a job in Hawaii. And the first thing they're going to ask you if you know how to make beef stew. Now at home, when you guys doing it at home, feel free to put some potatoes in. Add it last. That's You're going to add it just before you roux it. And before you thicken it up and then get your potatoes to it's almost soft and um, then you thicken it up and then by the time you thicken it up and everything and it sits in there it'll become soft but like I say in a, in a restaurant setting we don't put potatoes in it it gets the um, it gets the you know the stew part of it gritty and we don't like that so um, but at home by all means put your potatoes in and and enjoy it I hope you folks enjoy this video uh, like I said any questions let me know Folks, stay safe out there, stay blessed, and you folks have a nice day, okay? Aloha!